Good morning. Welcome as we uh, continue in our pray through the Psalms in this month of May. Today we're going to look at Psalm 84. We're on day 21. This month is flying by. Uh, let me read Psalm 84 for us, and then we'll get into that. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies! I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body, and soul, I shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies, my God and my King, what a joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praises. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rains will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger, and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. O Lord, God of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I'd rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. When I first read this psalm, I just thought there's a lot going on here. This is uh, in, the, in the psalms that we've been reading and praying through. Four times in this psalm, he describes God, gives him this title of Lord of Heaven's Armies, which kind of paints this picture in our minds of, you know, this powerful, um, you know, almost like military general type uh, of, 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 of person. And that sometimes I think we forget that, you know, God is in control and, and that there are uh, Heaven's Armies and he is... Uh, you know, the, the, the chief of that army. And, and then he uses this language through here, very colorful. Um, and I would encourage you to, as you read this psalm a couple of times, to allow the psalm to kind of paint the pictures in your mind. This is what he's trying to do. This is why he's using this type of language. You know, I faint with longing. Um, how lovely is your dwelling place? Like, I, I immediately think of of a home, a, a large one, because he talks about entering the courts of the Lord, you know, walking out of a home into, you know, this spacious, you know, backyard with beautiful gardens and, and, and stonework and patios and, you know, this courtyard. Um, he talks about the sparrow finding a home, uh, the swallow building a nest. He talks about um, the, the, the walking through the valley of weeping and what that looks like, and it becomes a place of refreshing springs, clean, uh, pure, cool water. The autumn rains clothe it with blessing. Um, so just using these words that the psalmist has to kind of paint these pictures in your mind of, of who God is and where he is, and, and really what struck me was um, the, the word joy. He uses it three times in this psalm. And uh, in verse 4 and verse 5, this is what he says. He says, what joy for those who can live in your house. And then in verse 5, what joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord. And then in verse 12, he ends the psalm with, what joy for those who trust in you. So I wrote those down. I underlined them. I wrote them down. You know, joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord. Joy for those um, who uh, live in your house. And joy for those who trust in you. And I started to think through those things. What does that mean to, you know, living in God's house, like this physical structure, residing with him, um, that, that brings me joy. To rely on his strength brings me joy. To trust in him brings me joy. This is the idea, I, I think, of dependence versus independence. Our joy is going to come from depending on God. When we live in somebody else's house, we are depending on them. When, when somebody is giving us their strength, when we're living by their strength, not our own, that's dependence. When we are trusting in God and not in ourselves, that's dependence. 
So for me, this prayer became one of dependence. Can I see God like the psalmist sees him as the Lord of heaven's armies, the living God, our son, our shield, uh, the giver of all good things who, you know, that he gives to those who he withhold, he withholds nothing that is good from those who do what is right. Like that God who provides and protects, am I dependent on him? Because my joy is going to come from my dependence on him. Let me read to you my prayer from this morning. Father, how I want to be where you are. When I'm in your presence, I want to be fully there, my whole being, my body and soul. You are the living God and you bring me joy. Joy does not come from what I can do alone, but when I rely on your strength. You can take places of weeping and turn them into a place of life. May I always depend on you. May I find my strength, comfort, protection, and life in and through you. You withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. Help me to do what is right. You are a good God. Help me to trust you more. Amen. So I hope as you read through this psalm and you do your observations and answer those couple of questions that, that, that you can kind of see this picture that the psalmist is painting with the words in your mind, and then you can convert that to your own prayer to God today. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day.